The modular phone concept has been around for quite a while. Google's been working on its project Aura for a couple years now, but Fairphone has actually beat them to the punch. It may not be as sleek as what Google's trying to do, but it does allow regular consumers to disassemble and repair their phones completely on their own. I'm Nick Gray from HD Blog, and this is our quick look at the Fairphone 2. Before we jump in, I'd like to point out that the Fairphone 2 isn't a modular phone in the same category as Google's Project Aura. The Aura plans to make a device which can be upgraded over time with different screen resolutions, processors, cameras, and storage options. The Fairphone 2 is a modular phone, but its modularity is limited, simply allowing you to replace the broken components yourself. Fairphone claims that they are working on modular component upgrades in the future, but the company has not laid out a roadmap for when that will happen. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the Fairphone 2. The phone can be disassembled and the main components removed in less than 90 seconds. Just remove the back cover and unfasten the clips at the bottom and the screen will slide right off. From there, the main camera, front facing camera, speakers, and vibration motor are all clearly labeled and can be swapped out by removing just a few screws. The phone is so easy to take apart and put back together that iFixit gave it a repairability score of 10 out of 10, the highest score it's ever bestowed on a smartphone. If you do happen to break something within the Fairphone 2, replacement modules are actually fairly cheap. A replacement screen is only 87 euro, the audio module sells for 27 euro, and the main camera is only 35, and they can all be purchased directly from Fairphone. Unfortunately, the Fairphone 2 isn't a flagship level device. It's equipped with a 5 inch 1080p display, 8 megapixel main camera, 2 megapixel front facing shooter, 32 gigs of internal storage with a micro XD expansion slot. 2420 milliamp hour battery and 2014 Snapdragon 801 processor that's paired with 2 gigs of RAM. While Fairphone's engineers spent quite a bit of time on the inside of the device, it's clear that the design was more of an afterthought. The clear case on the back of our demo unit allows you to see the internal components on the back of the phone, but the flexible plastic feels cheap in the hand and makes the Fairphone 2's 11 millimeter thick body look like it's still in the hardware prototype development stage, not a finished product. Software on the Fairphone 2 is a mix between stock Android and Fairphone's custom launcher. The launcher tries to oversimplify Android by hiding the application drawer. It can be accessed through a gesture panel which appears when you swipe in from the right of the screen. It does take some time to get used to, but we recommend downloading Google's launcher or other alternatives from Google Play. Despite using a processor from mid-2014, performance on the Fairphone 2 is actually pretty good. Interacting with apps is pretty snappy and the Snapdragon 801 and 2 gigs of RAM allow you to play most of the graphic heavy 3D games that are currently on Google Play. Benchmark numbers even put it ahead of the HTC One A9, which sells for roughly the same price as the Fairphone 2. The cameras on the phone are nothing special. The 8 megapixel sensor from the main camera showed exposure issues, causing images to be under or overexposed most of the time. If you spend enough time tweaking the exposure and saturation settings, you can get some decent images out of the device, but that's something that most people these days won't put up with. Battery life was hit or miss with this device. The 2420 milliamp hour battery is enough to give you three to four hours of screen on time, but we often found ourselves running out of juice before the day was over, after 10 to 12 hours. Fairphone should be commended for creating a modular phone and doing everything it can to source its components from suppliers who use conflict-free minerals, but we're not sure the phone's 529 euro price tag is worth it. The idea is that people will care about their Fairphone 2, replacing broken components over time and keeping the device for longer. It's an admirable goal, but one that can only be achieved if the phone actually was attractive. Sure, we can become emotionally attached to an ugly device, but that bond is easier to develop if there's a level of physical attraction as well. If you base your purchasing decisions on how much impact the product you buy has on the world, the Fairphone 2 is likely the best phone you'll be able to buy this year. It's even a great device for those who love the idea of owning the world's first modular smartphone. But if you're simply looking for a good phone and have 500 euro to spend, there are quite a few other options that would likely suit you better. Thanks for watching our quick look at the Fairphone 2. Let us know what you think about the modular phone in the comments below, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Yeah.